Hello, my name is Mary Similica. I'm pleased to come and speak with you today about chronic illness and how to overcome it. Um, in my life, I've experienced both the good and the bad of chronic illness. And I have severe lung disease now, um, pulmonary fibrosis, but all of my life I was faced with a challenge of very severe asthma from childhood on. And it just, my lungs have just gotten progressively worse over time. In 2007, I was diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis and after um, exhausting all the medications and oxygen and everything I could with my normal pulmonologist, I went for an evaluation at Johns Hopkins University Medical Center um, and that's where I was diagnosed. And at that time I was told that the average pulmonary fibrotic patient lives five to seven years post-diagnosis. Um, and I'm now 10 years into that diagnosis. So you can see that I've made more progress than my physicians expected me to. But um, whenever I get really bad news, I am a realist and I'm an optimist um, at the same time in that I don't take bad news lightly. However, I also don't take it in a fatalistic way. I want to overcome it. And so I'm always looking for that new challenge. In my personal life, at the same time, which is like sort of the unfair, you know, when it rains it pours story, I began to experience what I like to call my own personal reign of terror. And I lost the people, eight people closest to me in my life um, in an eight year period of time, while at the same time, the lung disease was getting worse. And so it, it was just a double whammy. And um, I, I got so depressed at one point because of complicated grief that I came to the point of um, thinking about suicide and actually apparently uh, having a psychotic break with reality. My neighbors heard me screaming one night and they uh, called the ambulance and that's how I woke up in a psych ward in a straitjacket strapped to a bed. And when I woke up in this all white room, I had absolutely no idea where I was. And I had been there for nine days as I later found out. This was really an eye opener for me. Um, for, the eight, for the probably five years prior to that, I knew that I was seriously ill um, with not only my lung disease, but also in my psyche. I was seeing, on, maybe on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'd see my psychiatrist, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and sa sometimes Saturday in the ER, I'd see my pulmonologist. That's too many doctors in one's life. And so I had to find ways to cope with it. And I really, I really uh, came to that, uh, finding it out in a, in a really stark way in the, in the hospital, in the psychiatric treatment. I was fortunate enough to have a wonderful psychiatrist and he came up with two very creative ways for me to overcome my, what I, we now know is an existential vacuum. Um, I had no idea what I was going to do with myself, how I was gonna get better, where I was gonna live. But I knew that I couldn't keep staying in my home where there was no, nothing but pictures of dead people on my walls and nothing but oxygen tanks and medical equipment set up. I had to plan a new life. When I said earlier that I had both the good news, had experienced both the good and the bad about chronic illness, the good news about this having chronic illness and being forced to, to stop in what you're doing, get off that fast train of I have to make more money, I have to build a bigger business, I have to do this, I have to do that and coming and being stopped in your dead, dead in your tracks, and then really understanding uh, at the pit of your soul what you need to do and what's really important in life. And it's certainly not making money and building bigger businesses. It's being healthy, finding new people to love after, you've, after loss. And so he came up with two creative ways for me to plan a new life for myself. He said, why don't you, since you're good at business, why don't you create a business plan for Mary 2.0? Make it like a real company with a great board of directors. And that's, and I said, well, now that's something I could really wrap my head around because I love to, to create and develop, incubate businesses. And the second thing he said is, I'd like for you to read this book, Man's Search for Meaning. And I laughed, I almost laughed in his face because I said, I know all about Frankel. I read his book in college, I met him. I know all about his work. And he said, well, humor me, read it again, because it never hurts to read it again. And once I had done both of those things, um, I really understood suffering at its core. And, and I understood Dr. Frankel's work in a way that 
I hope most people don't have to find out firsthand. Having experienced the trauma that I experienced and having living and living with ex the experience of the trauma of my own chronic illness, I was forced to understand uh, Dr. Frankel's work at a deeper level so that I could uncover new meaning in my own life. And he was very, very smart. I mean, obviously one of the great geniuses of the world. And he taught us three ways that we can create, uncover meaning in our lives. First, we can find a way to create something. Well, I do that with businesses, producing movies, uh, producing um, digital content. I, I always am crea I'm always creative. The second way we can find that is to experience someone, to find a person to love. I've done that on, on anew again. And the third way we can do it is to change our attitude towards suffering um, or toward any circumstance. And, and you don't have to suffer to find meaning, but there is meaning in suffering. And that I learned firsthand. Um, and so I, I utilized Frankel's work in, a, in both a, um, a thoughtful way and a meaningful way to uncover meaning. And, and I learned that I could cope and I could get up every single day and I still have to do that. I have to get up every single day and realize that I'm not the person I was at age 35 or 40 who wasn't sick. And I have to um, realign and adjust my new reality every single day. Okay, today you're breathing pretty good, but you're still gonna have to spend two hours, Mary, taking medication before you can start your work day. So I get up a little bit earlier and I plan for whatever the circumstance is gonna be. For example, if I know that I'm going out to dinner that night, I don't eat the whole day because when I eat, it lowers, it makes my diaphragm um, go up and because it squeezes up the belly and then it, it, it shortens my vital capacity. I don't have as much air and I can't breathe. So I wait until the latest possible moment in the day to even eat a meal. And those kind of things you do. I had to bring my office home because it was too much, it drained too much of my energy to go to the office every day. So I brought my office home and so I work from home now. And I created, I found, um, um, created a new business, a film company, so I can be a producer and work from my own computer in my house. So for the most part. So what I would advise anyone who's overcoming chronic illness and facing a possible terminal illness is adjust your attitude in every moment, moment by moment, minute by minute, day by day, year by year, and adjust to that new reality. And realize that you will find, as Dr. Frankel taught us, meaningful moments every step of the way. Um, I always tell students when I'm talking about this that they can also adapt my personal mantra and that is, if you live your life from the inside out and not from the outside in, most of your day is going to be wonderful anyway. Thank you for listening.